Imagine the possibility that life exists beyond our fragile blue planet. For decades, scientists have considered this concept, becoming increasingly confident of the chances that extremophile life may exist somewhere out there, perhaps even within our own solar system. With every year that passes, we discover more about how life develops and evolves, and what the conditions needed for life to spring into existence are. Scientists have come to understand that the requirements for life aren't nearly as complicated and extensive as we once thought. Even so, most celestial worlds are harsh and unfriendly, devastating environments that cannot host any life forms. However, it happens that a few rare beacons of hope lie in the abyss of outer space, where the conditions for life may be met, whereby one in a billion chance, both the chemistry and energy needed to create life is available. Astronomers have looked for many light years outwards, towards the exoplanets, distant celestial bodies orbiting faraway stars in their Goldilocks regions. But perhaps good candidates for habitability lie closer to home, in the underwater lakes of Mars, or the icy insides of comets, for example. Or maybe it's the exotic moons of Jupiter and Saturn that we should be exploring to find life lurking away from Earth. Welcome to our documentary about Europa and the search for extraterrestrial life in collaboration with Ryan from Espresso Insight, who helped us research Europa. If you learned something new from this video, please subscribe to 26 Dimensions and share the video with your friends. Of all the places we could look for life in the solar system, Jupiter's peculiar moon Europa is among the most promising. Europa is one of the incredibly rare places which holds all the necessary requirements for life. To harbor life, a celestial body needs to tick three basic requirements. There are many places that can fulfill one or two, but very few which meet all of them. Life as we know it is not much more than a wonderfully complex convolution of organic chemistry. It's a spectacularly sophisticated combination of various heavy elements, large atoms that are formed in the extremely high pressure, nuclear cores of stars. When sufficiently large stars run out of their hydrogen-based fuel and explode into a supernova, they blast out all the incredible heavy elements that were forged in their cores. These chemicals voyage out into space, where they absorbed into a beautiful nebulae. In these vast interstellar clouds, the force of gravity clusters regions of dust together giving birth to new stars, planets, moons, and other celestial bodies. The first generation of solar systems were constructed from light elements, like hydrogen and helium, and a small amount of lithium. But now, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, multiple generations of stars have sprung into existence, created heavy elements, and spewed them out into space in their stunning deaths. Now, the universe is populated by sparse amounts of complex atoms, like carbon, most of which is confined in the planets and celestial bodies. Earth is one of them. Life would not be possible without these heavy elements. Complex atoms allow stunning combinations of matter to arise under the right conditions, creating new substances with strange properties. As far as we know, all life forms on Earth are carbon-based. Without this crucial element, we simply couldn't exist. Carbon is a special element. Each carbon atom can form several bonds with other atoms, such as hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. And these bonds can be created and broken with enough energy. Carbon is versatile. It can hang around in small molecules like carbon dioxide, essential for photosynthesis in plants, and some bacteria, or it can grow up with other atoms to form molecules like adocene triphosphate, crucial for storing energy in both single-celled and multi-celled organisms. These astonishing chemical activities do not happen everywhere. To form bonds, you need energy and movement. Atoms must be able to diffuse and move about, to interact with each other and bind together. Complex chemistry also does not arise under dangerous radioactive conditions, where high-energy photons can strike and break bonds and prevent complex molecules being built. These are the three crucial ingredients for complex molecules, and therefore, life. Firstly, energy, the creator of bonds and the catalyst for activity. Secondly, chemistry, which allows unique molecules to be built. And third, a protective environment that can block radiation out. Astoundingly, Jupiter's moon Europa may fulfill all three of these conditions. Water is an extremely important ingredient for life. When liquid, it allows chemicals like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur to form into complicated molecules. On Earth, the presence of liquid water oceans allows chemicals and energy, both of which were probably spoon out of underwater hydrothermal vents, to work together in building strings of atoms. Europa at first sight does not seem a very friendly world. With no liquid oceans in sight, it is conceivable that complex molecules could be built there. But take a dive beneath its frigid, icy crust, and you'll discover a vast liquid ocean that extends 62 miles beneath the surface. 
Although at the equator of Europa, temperatures settle at a freezing negative 160 degrees Celsius, possible hydrothermal vents on the seafloor may be warming up then oceans and providing a source of energy for primitive life forms. If life were to exist within the depths of Europa's global ocean, it would take a number of different forms. To clarify, we have no concrete evidence that extraterrestrial life exists on Europa whatsoever right now. However, if we're to assume that Europa does have such a large liquid ocean and that it is filled with heavy elements and energy, we can make several hypotheses for what life may look like down there, based on what we know about the origin of life on our home planet, Earth. Defining what classifies as a life form is a major challenge, and one that has been debated strongly over the years. There is a general consensus that something living should be sufficiently complex, and it should respire or otherwise use energy from its surroundings. Ideally, it would grow, respond to stimuli, reproduce, and evolve through natural selection too. Be that as it may, many scientists do recognize life forms as basic as simple strands of genetic material that replicate themselves. And in a way, this makes sense, but may not do anything, and its information is a bunch of gibberish, but if it reproduces and can evolve new information while using the energy from its surroundings, we could say a string of DNA or RNA classifies as a living thing, albeit not a very interesting one. If anything does exist in Europa's oceans, it's most likely to be fairly primitive, single-celled microorganisms. Our best understanding of Europa's ice crust is that it is between 20 and 180 million years old. On the evolutionary scale, that's not especially long. We know that on Earth, life appeared in the oceans about 4 billion years ago. But it was only 600 million years ago, as far as we know, that multicellular life became common. If we're to go by these estimates, we can assume that life on Europa would be certainly single-celled, and presumably quite basic too, bacteria possibly. Given more time to evolve, of course, these life forms could become more complex. Through random mutations and the constant process of natural selection over hundreds of millions of years, cells could evolve to become more efficient and group together into basic multicellular organisms, which can harvest more of the energy from Europa's theoretical hydrothermal vents. We have some convincing evidence that this story played out on Earth. Even today, hydrothermal vents in Earth's seas are home to a diverse array of life forms. We could even go as far as saying there's a slim possibility of life forms appearing at the surface of Europa's icy crust. Here, life could benefit from periodic exposure to surface compounds and other molecules that accumulate on the ice crust. Unfortunately for our search for life, it's fair to say that the high radiation exposure on the surface, thanks to Europa's thin atmosphere, makes this not especially likely. Speaking of Europa's crust, there are actually various benefits for life that come with having a solid upper layer of water on the planet. For one, it protects the ocean from radiation, but it also operates as an insulating layer, keeping the heat from geological activity and hydrothermal vents inside where it can be used by life forms. Moreover, the presence of an icy crust on Europa combined with the moon's elliptical orbit could create an additional source of energy. During a full orbit, Europa nears Jupiter and then swings far away from it, like displayed. When Europa is close to Jupiter, there is a strong gravitational attraction that causes fluidic turbulence in Europa's liquid interior. Of course, when Europa is far from Jupiter, this force is a lot weaker. Effectively, this causes Europa to marginally elongate and contract, like a bouncing rubber ball. Known as tidal flexing, this process can be compared to how a water balloon behaves when it is being tossed through the air. In that case, the kinetic energy input into the balloon when it is thrown causes it to deform as the water collides against itself in the balloon. With Europa, it is the force of gravity that causes its deformation, and as layers of rock and ice slide across each other, friction and pressure provides a new source of thermal energy. It also leads to various geological features on the surface. Geysers, cracks, craters, and volcanic activity are some examples. Not to mention that since Europa sheets of ice resemble the tectonic plates on Earth, they also exhibit similar behavior. They move by a small distance each year. A crater that existed on Europa 100 million years ago almost definitely does not exist now. The tectonic liveliness of the ice sheets effectively erases these craters. Because of this constant shifting in Europa's changing ice crust, it is the smoothest surface of all celestial bodies in our solar system. On its own, this fact isn't remarkable. But when you consider the fact that without an ocean to set on top of, none of these extraordinary tectonic activities and tidal forces would exist, and therefore, Europa's surface wouldn't be so smooth. You have some fairly convincing evidence that there is a liquid ocean underneath the icy facade. This is not a standalone argument, 
we have a very real data-based evidence to contribute to the idea that Europa has a hidden ocean. Take non-synchronous rotation for example. Europa has a non-synchronously rotating mass. Essentially, the crust of the moon is not rotating at the same rate as the core. When the Galileo probe inspected Europa, it found evidence of this thanks to mass distribution readings. What's the most plausible explanation for this decoupling of Europa's mass? Of course, a fluid body must be separating the core from the crust. Furthermore, we know there must be an asymmetry in Europa's interior mass distribution simply by the fact that it is rotating at a rate which does not match well with the rate at which it orbits Jupiter. Scientists think if Europa did have a liquid ocean, the movement of the core and the tectonic movement of the crust would influence how Europa appears to rotate, causing the confusion over why it rotates at such an unusual speed compared to its orbit around Jupiter. But wait, there's more. The Hubble Space Telescope, observing Europa, has detected various strange phenomena on its surface that need explaining. For example, it found huge geysers of what looked like water vapor erupting from beneath the icy crust. Extending up to 20 times as high as Mount Everest, these plumes could suggest that there is a large body of liquid water beneath the ice that presumably is influenced by strong tidal forces too. Since these periodic events expel a large volume of vapor high into the atmosphere, we could send future missions to Europa to gather samples and prove that the geysers are shooting out water. This is a lot less energy intensive than directly drilling into the ice, which might end up being a foolish idea as we're not totally sure how thick the crust is. It could be a kilometer deep for all we know. Also, take a look at these streaks along the surface of Europa. They're huge, winding cracks that crisscross Europa's crust. The way the cracks are aligned in different directions has led researchers to hypothesize that Europa's axis of rotation has not been constant over time. At some point in the past, Europa may have spun around a tilted axis, again, probably because of its inner liquid body. Finally, we need to explain Europa's chemistry. It's the fundamental ingredient in any life form. Even if Europa met all the other criteria, if it didn't have the right mixture of heavy elements, none of it would matter. Aside from an icy crust and liquid water, Europa is composed of silicate rock. It has a similar core structure to the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. We believe it has an iron-nickel core, which is radioactive and will produce some internal heat. There is also evidence for hydrogen peroxide on the surface. This is a significant finding because hydrogen peroxide can react with water to produce an oxygen byproduct. This is yet another ingredient for life, since it is used in respiration and to build organic molecules. Then, we should account for the other elements, like carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus that would be used in life forms, assuming they are carbon-based. There are some theories to suggest how geological activity and hydrothermal vents could provide Europa's oceans with these incredibly important chemicals. Given that we think Europa has a similar composition to Earth, it should have much of the same key components that our planet did when life was evolving. Humans have observed the Europa moon during space probe flybys since the 70s. Pioneer 10 and 11 captured low-resolution images of Europa's icy surface, and Voyager 1 and 2 sent back data highlighting the ice cracks and lines on the crust. The Galileo probe orbited Jupiter for eight years and managed to provide significant information about Europa's icy surface, as well as data supporting evidence of the global hidden ocean. NASA's Juno spacecrafts, Cassini Huygens and New Horizons, both passed by Europa at points not too long ago. We have enough data from these missions to put Europa down as a definite candidate for life in our own solar system. Astrobiologists certainly think it's possible that primitive life forms could exist at the seafloor of Europa's vast oceans. And of all the places in the solar system we should be looking, Europa is undeniably one of the most promising, along with Mars, which we're scouring for underground water reservoirs. Unfortunately, this doesn't mean we won't be disappointed. We could travel all the way to Europa and take samples from its atmosphere and drill down into its crust only to find out that it's a deadly wasteland with an ocean flooded with toxic chemicals and temperatures far too low for habitability. But given the odds of finding life in our solar system that isn't on planet Earth, Europa does have a decent shot. At this stage, there isn't exactly a realistic way to look at this issue. We just don't know enough about Europa yet. You can either hope optimistically that there is life, or take the pessimistic approach and see Europa as yet another barren, cold, dead celestial body. What do you think? Is there life in Europa's oceans? If there is, how complex would you expect it to be? Let me know in the comments below. 
I've only been growing this channel from June, and I plan to post many more space documentaries on 26 dimensions. So if you're interested in that, or science and engineering in general, please consider subscribing. I'd like to thank Espresso Insight once again for his help in the research for this documentary. Espresso Insight is a large repository of fantastic articles about technology, space, and science at large. What I like about this site is that it breaks down topics into the key aspects, nicely summarizing them so they're easy to understand without technical knowledge. Go check his site out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.